we can say that the devotion to St. Joseph began in the church with Mary and Jesus, the holy angels, the angel that appeared to him. God was the first one to choose him. And that's in that way, God was devoted to St. Joseph. God chose St. Joseph to be the head of the holy family, to be a father, a human father for God's own son. That's a lot of devotion. So we could say the devotion to St. Joseph began right there at the beginning. All those years in Nazareth, God himself, Jesus, was devoted to his virginal father, foster father, was devoted to the man God had chosen to be over him, to form him, to be a father for him. Jesus was devoted to St. Joseph, and certainly Our Lady was, saying yes to his marriage proposal entering into a lifelong union with him as husband and wife, Mary was devoted to St. Joseph. So right at the beginning. But then the church didn't have a strong devotion to St. Joseph. The church was very focused on understanding who Jesus is and proclaiming the gospel. And soon after that developed a devotion to Our Lady because she was the mother of God. There were disputes as to whether Jesus was really God. Was he God already in the womb of Mary? Was he true God and true man? And if he was God in the womb of Mary, then that made her the mother of God. So the church had a devotion to Mary because it had a devotion to Jesus. The devotion to St. Joseph started sometime later. There were already discussions in the early church about St. Joseph. The fathers of the church wrote about him, spoke about him. They wanted to work through some of those difficulties in scripture. For example, in one genealogy, St. Joseph is the son of Jacob. In another genealogy, he's the son of Heli. How do we work that out? Those are the kinds of questions the fathers of the church were looking at. Also looking at the question of, was it a real marriage? Were Mary and Joseph truly married? That was a critical question for St. Augustine. Gave him occasion to write about marriage. And also some questions about whether St. Joseph was young or old, whether he was a virgin or had been married before. There were some difficulties over the brothers and sisters of Jesus. How do we get brothers and sisters of Jesus when Mary was ever virgin? These are some of the discussions that they had, questions that they asked. But as a devotion, in terms of prayer and liturgy, that came a bit later, some centuries later. And the church has only grown more and more in her devotion to St. Joseph. With the first liturgical feast occurring just around 1000 AD, there was a real springtime in about 1500 AD, especially with St. Teresa of Avila, also Bernardine of Siena, Jean Gerson, a number of, well, St. Bernard also wrote beautifully about St. Joseph, and there were a number of saints and St. Francis de Sales had a very strong devotion, and it's been ever-increasing ever since the 1500s. And then, since Blessed Pius IX declared St. Joseph the patron of the Universal Church 150 years ago in 1870, every pope has written about St. Joseph and has offered a special devotion to St. Joseph for the last 150 years, to the point that we have a pope under Pope Francis, who actually has a symbol of St. Joseph in his coat of arms. So we can see this increasing devotion, this increasing awareness of the Church about the importance of St. Joseph, and then even a whole year dedicated to him. In 2020-2021, a whole year of St. Joseph on the 150th anniversary of his proclamation as patron of the Universal Church. So maybe you should also have an increasing devotion to St. Joseph. I know that's been important for me to become more devoted to him day by day and year by year.